What's up, everybody? Still don't have my music figured out totally. I had my like my microphone up against the speaker so you guys could hear it this time. It didn't sound like it was like someone far off room. So happy Wednesday, everybody. It's lacrosse goalie Wednesday. I am the goalie boss, Coach Edwards. I like that nickname. I like goalie boss, right? Like that's one of my goalies called me that this weekend. I thought that was kind of cute. So um, I think I need a line of merch with goalie boss on it. What do you think? Give me give me a high five. Oh, wait. Now, now I've got now I got microphones coming up. Hang tight. Now I don't know where my music is. Ah, I'll figure this out at some point, guys. So um mom says it was awful. You can't tell me my music was awful. No, that's not cool. You're mom. Everybody give a shout out to Eleanor Edwards on there. That's mom. Biggest fan ever. Love it. Videoed every one of my games growing up. Dave Nord, good to see you, buddy. Hey, everybody. Oh, this is great. We're good. Checking in. We've got, some, ooh, got good numbers today, too. This is awesome, right? So um, good stuff. So happy Wednesday, everybody. Wherever you are, I hope it's amazing. I hope it's warm. I hope you're COVID-free. I hope you're getting ready to vote, right? Where I am, I'm under a foot of snow, which is really, really cool. It's that time of year for us. I'm getting so ready to ski. Um, yeah, noisy, repetitive. Yeah, classical music is noisy and repetitive, too, mom. Jeez. Anyway, um, so. Um, Great stuff coming on. Um, she sugarcoats it for you. Oh no, Dave North, thanks. Um, a lot of good stuff today. Uh, a lot of good news, like a bunch of new lacrosse goal university members. So, to all our lacrosse goal university members, Jacqueline Knight, there you go. Um, and to our past lacrosse goal university members, Dave Nord, uh, Katie Nord, uh, got her first offer right last week, right? That's pretty sweet. Like, really excited about that. Um, that's really, really cool. And, um, you know, that's one thing that makes me really, really happy. It's one thing to work with goalies who are like gifted and who are like, you know, they're the cream of the crop and they're going to, they're going to, you know, Hopkins is their dream and it's like, it's all there for you. But the, the, the real pleasure I get is in taking, you know, athletes that probably, um, not uh, that probably weren't expected to go that far, uh, but who had the dream and we make it work. And that's what it's all about. Right. So that's, uh, that's, that's really what this is all about. So, um, so for our lacrosse school un university members, a uh, lot of good stuff going on in there. Um, please, if you haven't already, if get me your, your video for the month or, or your, and we'll, and or book your, um, uh, your coaching call, that'd be awesome. And, um, new videos going in this week. So one of the things that I'm adding to lacrosse school university for our, um, our, our graduate members and above, so graduates and masters, is um, a functional movement screen. So what that is, is a, it's a way to kind of assess your athlete physically and and get an idea of what it is they need to work on physically. Because, you know, if they're just – if all they're focusing on and get, is getting shots and, make, and, and making saves and, and that's the work – they're missing probably 75% of what, what needs to happen to be a really good goalie. Right. So, um, you know, so I, we've got a lot of goalies who, you know, they love the game, they love the sport, they love the position, but they're not necessarily improving themselves physically. And that can, they'll, they'll be good now, but they're going to plateau. All right. Um, and so uh, I don't want that to happen. So FMS videos are going in the lacrosse goal university this week. Um, please remind your goalies to get in there. Uh, I'm batching now for goalie critiques, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're you're waiting for one for me, uh, just hang tight. Thursday's coming tomorrow, and I'm gonna be I'm probably gonna get caught up, pretty caught up tomorrow. All right, so that's uh, that's really really good. Um, and so um, and also for those of you that last week um, were all in on my experiment, I apologize, I didn't get you stuff yet. A week has flown by, and I'm still not ready. So uh, if you have a goalie, okay, um, and you'd like to take part in my uh, stance, um, uh, stance, um, kind of experiment. You can send me an email coach Edwards at lacrosse goalie tips.com. All right. I'll put that in the, um, uh, uh, I'll put that in the notes right now. Goalie tips.com. Hopefully I spelled that right. Oh, no, I didn't lacrosse goalie tips, goalie. Jeez. Lacrosse goalie tips. Oh my God. I can't spell. Could somebody type my email in there? Coach Edwards at lacrosse goalie tips.com. Um, and just put experiment in the subject line, right? So in all caps, just put experiment in the subject line and I'll get you information. Uh, I'll get that done probably this weekend. All right. Because I've got, I want to put an end to the, the, the wide stance, narrow stance question. Uh, and so, uh, so cool, cool news. And I see he's probably checked in next week, guys, for this Facebook live, I'm going to interview a guy by the name of Jim Beardmore. So if you guys know Jim Beardmore, uh, give me a thumbs up or high five in the comments, wherever you're watching. Uh, so Jim Beardmore is a little older than I am, just slightly. Uh, played at 
Maryland's. Um, his father was actually uh, one of the greatest lacrosse coaches in college coaching history at Maryland. And, um, and, um, and yeah, it's funny, Jim, it came from the generation where his dad, as a coach, said, Jimmy, you really should take off your chest protector because it's slowing you down. Right. So uh, Jim has a uh, program he calls Be the Best, and he works with athletes uh, in and around the Maryland area and uh, in the Baltimore area. And um, and so we're going to have a cool discussion next week. So I hope you, you'll check it in. Check in. Uh, please, you know, um, invite, you know, your friends. And Jim's a bit of a character. I'm a little nervous. I'll be honest. Jim, if you're listening to me right now, we haven't talked yet, but I'm nervous. Right. But uh, Jim's uh, Jim and I are cut from a very similar cloth, so I think it's going to be a very good conversation. So it'll be kind of cool. And it's uh, I grew up watching Jim uh, playing on, you know, uh, playing at Maryland and then playing for club teams that uh, this is like pre MLL, right? So uh, Jim is of that generation. So and he's he's gone on. He's been a, an MLL uh, coach. He's coached at um, private schools in Maryland, and he's the type of coach that I I would love to have as a coach. Uh, but he's also the type of coach that. You know, if you're a if you're a if you're a soft little tulip in the forest, you're probably not gonna like you know you're probably not gonna like what he has to say say some some sometimes. But that's you know what we're what we're doing here is we're we're helping you the best we know how, right? And so if uh, if you get offended by that, that's on you, not on us. Um, but um, but uh, anyway, it's gonna be a fun conversation, so I'm looking forward to it. So please join us next week. So um, so uh, yeah, so that's really good. Um, so today's Facebook Live, guys, is all about the five hole. Okay, <laughs> sounds funny when I say it that way. So it's all about the five hole. Um, one of the, so we got this post. Uh, I'm going to try to get it up on my screen here. There it is. Uh, this was uh, in in our private Facebook group called the Creating the Lacrosse Goalie of the Future. If you're not a member, please go over there. Answer the three questions. If you don't answer the three questions, I'm not going to let you in, to be honest. Um, and so for those of you guys that don't know, for those that are listening on my page or on YouTube right now, um, you know, I've created this group as a way for, you know, it's it's basically a way for me to kind of have a, a safe space for people to talk about the position and, uh, oh, there's Jim there, and um, to talk about the position of goaltending and uh, and it's, um, uh, and, and, a way for me to perhaps steer you clear of uh, of some uh, misinformation, or we can have discussions about co uh, coaching that um, you may have heard and 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 maybe good, maybe not be good. The comment this week that was really really cool. So um, this came from Anthony. Um, where is it? Anthony Murphy. Anthony's a tall dude, and um, and so what we're gonna do here? Hold on, let me just. Uh, got screens all over here let me see if i can get into this there i am where is that there oh little delay sorry um so um sorry i can't just lost it but anthony's a tall goalie you know and, and wants to know how to get down to stop low shots and so what i'm gonna start by saying was even if your goalie is not tall okay um this is going to apply okay because uh, you know, I've, I've been talking about this for years. I've been talking about how, you know, the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to be, uh, is going to embrace more athleticism. We're, we're not going to be teaching like the, this static way to play goalie. Like you're a freaking statue in the cage. Um, and I'll be honest, I think I've been a little soft about it. Um, you know, go goalies who have worked with me, I've, I've, I've shared this with them for years. Uh, but to the kind of the general population that I'm speaking to now, I haven't been as direct with this. And, and, and let, me, uh, let me say this right now, how are teaching goalies to save shots at the five hole is wrong. Okay. Right. Um, you know, teaching just like to basically squat down and get your stick between your legs is not working. It is not the way to teach a goalie. So if your goalie coach is teaching you that they are behind the times, right? They are stuck in the past and I'm going to prove it to you right now, because what I'm going to bring up here in a second is I'm going to bring up videos that basically prove my point. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to get into a discussion about equipment again. Um, and I'm going to get kind of heated. It's going to be Coach Edwards' rant today, right? So for those of you guys that came for the Coach Edwards' rant, you're in the right place um, at the right time with the right people and all that stuff, okay? So uh, so let's talk about this. So um, let me see if I can pull this up. Boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh. All right. So far, so good. My computer's not going to crash. I got like 42 screens up here and 12 programs. And if my screen crashes, I apologize. So 
for Anthony Murphy and everybody else listening, okay, again, whether you're a tall goalie or you're a short goalie, it doesn't really matter. This is going to apply. So I've got uh, some video clips here of three of the best goalies in the game. Okay, we've got Jack and Cannon uh, of the Atlas. We've got Blaze Jordan and um, and of Chaos, and we've got Kyle Burnlor um, of the Whip Snakes. Right. Um, so um, so I, I want to just start by saying this. When it comes to making saves, all right, we have to think critically. And if you're not using the cheat sheets that are at lacrossegoalytips.com, please go to lacrossegoalytips.com, download the cheat sheets. The link is like right on the front, like the, the homepage. Got a great comment this week from one of our um, lacrosse goalie university moms who's been following my work for like three years and she's been using them for years and they've learned so much. And so the I, one of the main principles is that you can really help your goalie by taking like keeping their stats now i encourage your goalie to do this after practice like or after games to watch video of their game and to do their own statistics okay my mom eleanor edwards who's in there now right um who's in the group right now giving me heck for my intro music um videoed every one of my games growing up every one of my games and i watched every one of those videos and i did all my own statistics and i'll tell you that is the that is probably the main thing that helped me become an all-american because I knew what I need, like what I needed to work on. I knew where the shots were coming from. I knew where the shots were going in on me, and I knew how to fix. Like I then went to practice with an intention of, I'm going to fix this stuff, right? Um, so, so the idea is that um, um, the idea is that we need to know. Okay, listen. How many shots am I missing between my legs? Like if it's a five hole shot, like how many shots am I actually missing there? Or how many shots am I missing to my off stick side? Or how many shots am I missing, you know, stick side high? Like if you don't know, then your goalie's going to practice tomorrow and or you've paid to go send them to some whiz bang coach locally, you know, and you're spending a boatload of money and your 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 kid is basically wasting their time. Okay. So so and wasting your money. All right, let's let's be completely honest with it. So that let's let's be real smart here. So the deal with this is that when it comes to stopping five hole shots, a good question to ask is like, well, how how many shots are going five hole on you? Now, when you watch some highlight videos, and so I, I totally recommend if you go to YouTube and you look for the Kyle Burnlore clips and the then the Kincannon clips and the Blazer Jordan clips, look for just highlights 2019 and 2020. For my lacrosse school university members, I did a whole hour of coaching content on the Concannon clips, right? That are in our um, our goalie our, our goalie section, right? So so you you want to get your goalie in there to take a look at that. And if you're a parent or coach, you'll want to check it out too. So um, because this Concannon clip is really kind of interesting, and and what I'm about to prove to you is how like okay, these PLL goalies are seeing a lot of shots down low, all right, and how they make the save will. Um, will tell you a lot. And so let's just, we'll just play this up a little bit. All right. So if you can watch the screen, you'll see for those of you guys watching, uh, if you're listening, sorry, you're going to have to, if you're on iTunes, you're going to have to figure this out on your own, but come watch the video. But uh, let's just play this through for one. So first, I just wanted to show that clip to show you how tall Kincannon is. And now look at his stance. So let's clip this. Boom. Okay. So I want to start here. Because we're talking today about the question came from a tall goalie, but again, this matters for everybody. We got to think a couple things about goaltending in general, right? And when you look at goalies in other sports and you realize that, okay, a, a goalie is taking, if they're, if the ball is shot to their right or the puck is shot to their right, they're taking something from their right side to make that save, right? So if it, it could be a blocker or catching glove, or it could be their right foot, it could be their stick, whatever. But if that puck is going or that ball is going to their left side, they're reaching something from the left side of their body to make that save, right? But in lacrosse, in field lacrosse, we are still primarily stuck with this idea that we are, um, making saves with with just our stick and that's wrong right that that doesn't work okay and coaches that perpetuate that myth need to just stop coaching like like and even our pro goalies that play i'll prove to you that they're missing this as well right i watched uh the other day the two the 2019 um big 10 final 
between Johns Hopkins and Penn State. It was this, like this epic game. I think it was like 17-17 going into overtime. Um, you know, each team had like 40 plus shots. It was ridiculous. So, um, so the idea is um uh, the winning goal that went in, I think it was, I, I think Jonathan Hopkins won. I can't remember. Uh, or Penn State won. Anyway, um, went off stick side, off stick hip. And the goalie tried to like, took basically their bottom hand out of the way to try to get their stick head there. And it went in, right? That's just dumb to me. That doesn't make sense anymore, right? We've got to start teaching our goalies in a lot. And I, and I, 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 uh, like I tell my lacrosse goalie university goalies, you got to start you, you learning how to make saves with your bottom hand. All right, because you just it just it's just numbers, right? It's just geometry. The ball is moving too fast from too close to get to that spot, and you can't make the save with just your stick. Same goes true for the five hole. So what you'll see here is this, is that first and foremost, Concanon is like how tall is Concanon, guys? Like he's like six two, right? He's huge, right? It, like he, when he stands in the cage here, boom! Look how tall he is. Right. I know the camera's at an angle, but the top of his head, the, the crown of his helmet is easily above the net. Right. But when he gets in, in his stance on this shot, this shot was from about 10 yards. OK. Right. Look how low he's gotten. OK. Now he's in a wide stance, which when you are like 20 something years old and you've got tons of strength in your hips, you can do this. When you are like 11 or 12 or 14, or if you're the girls, like you're probably not going to get in the stance, nor should you. You just don't have the strength to do what he's capable of. And here's the deal. So why, the reason why I'm showing this is that what he's done is he's basically brought his stick and his body to the middle of the cage. Okay. What he knows in this position is that by having his feet out this wide on this angle of a shot, any shot that goes outside the foot is going wide, right? And I call this, what this stance does is this gives a goalie a foundation of rotation, okay? So um, so we're not stepping to the ball, right? We're not, there's no stepping here. What you're going to see in a second is a drop, right? Like a butterfly, like a hockey goalie, like a butterfly in hockey, all right? Which takes some getting used to, okay? But but the other thing is, is so by, by squatting low, he knows that if this player shoots high, he still has the strength and the um, potential to get to those spots, right? So, um, uh, but a short goalie, if they squatted this low, might not be able to physically get their stick high enough to make a save top corner. Okay. Thank you. PLL says he's 6'3". Appreciate it. He's probably like six one and a half. Let's be honest, right? 6'3 is like standing on the soap in the locker room with your cleats on and your helmet, right? That's, I mean, we all know that, right? But um, appreciate that. Uh, Mike Tubin, hey, good to see you, buddy. Um, so, so, but but what I want you to understand here is that, is that as a goalie, what he's trying to do is he's bringing, is he's bringing his stick to the center of the cage because right now from this shot, he knows that he can get shot on all the way around him, Okay. That's where that, you know, uh, basically the only place this ball is not going is in the center of the cage where his body is. And as a goalie, if a, if a shot's coming at me physically, like at part of my body and I don't have to move for it, I'm stoked. Like I'm super excited because I'm just going to suck this up with my body and I'm going to go like that was a dumb shot and off we go. Um, I'm doing a, um, a rather long uh, video for all across goal university members on there was a a. a a big long YouTube post posted by a goalie coach. Um, and I like, it's just horrible. Right. And, and part of it is about standing back in the cage and I'm just tearing that apart because it's, it's wrong. Like it's just, it's bad thinking goalies got to come forward, be a big presence in the cage and absorb that shot with their body. Okay. So back to five hole. What's happening here is as oh, and I'll play this through, right? I'll just play this through for you. Watch this. All right. So let me get the banner out of the way. Um, do do hide that. Boom. Okay. So, um, do you guys see that? Okay. Or I'll just play it again. All right. Boom. All right. So there's some cool things about this shot. And for my, uh, I won't get into it now for my lacrosse school university members. Like there's ton, just, I did a ton of content on this, but, but here's a pro professional lacrosse goalie. Okay. Arguably, like you could take Jack and Cannon and put him on your kids like elite 
like travel team and he'd probably do okay would we all agree like he would probably do just fine with your like u14 travel program okay playing not just coach but playing so this is enough like this is enough proof i hope to everybody that your goalies need to start learning how to be athletic and dropping to their knees in the cage all right the coaching tips i've seen for years especially for the girls this drives me bonkers is when we're teaching goalies to drop like to basically you know nice and tidy get your stick out and get your bottom hand over the top hand and I, listen I, te- I i used to teach that i like i still have a video inside lacrosse goal university that talks about that but i'm like it doesn't work anymore it, it doesn't it doesn't it just doesn't work and and this this is proof and i'm gonna give you more proof in a second so for our tall tall goalies the idea here is that if you're standing in a very nice and tidy vertical stance and your stick is for every inch, your stick is up is an extra inch. You got to move that down. If that ball goes low. And if you're not getting there fast enough, odds are you're probably not kind of hedging your bets enough, right? You're probably thinking, well, Oh, I got to have my stick high in case the ball goes high. Well, what if the stick, the, the ball goes low, you're basically giving your, your, you know, you're holding yourself up. Right? So, so, learning how to drop to your knees and how to get your knees in front of that ball and being protected enough to do it. Okay. Now I'm going to try, this is not, hold on guys. Let me, because I want to find this. I saved this on Instagram and hopefully, oh wait. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Damn it. Sorry. Hold on. Let me find it. Cause this is really cool. This is badass. Oh my God. A lot of scrolling. Dun, 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 there it is. Okay, hold on. Um, do, 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 okay, we're gonna go here. Um, and okay, ta, let me just clear this up. Add source, screen capture, smart select. All right, how many of you guys saw this on Instagram? This came from We We Are Keller Lacrosse. All right, I'll pull this out a little bit. All right, can you guys see this? Okay, so this this video made me sick okay because i can't talk to you about teaching your goalie that they got to get their shins in front of the ball or they got to drop their news without talking about protection because this is stupid right and every every parent you should be taking this to your program and going like our goalies don't need to go through this sort of abuse right we got to start putting some rules in place there's nothing good about this Right. And what's kind of nice is like, so we are Keller lacrosse wrote, you know, ouch, this is why we should always be nice to our goalies. Yes. They choose to be in the goal and take the shots, but your goalies are the last line of defense for your team. And will take upwards of 90 mile per hour shots questionable um, to their bodies for the team. So do you think you can get in the goal and do what your goalie does? It's not just a physical position. It requires a different kind of mindset. Well, really does it like, no, um, Next time you see your goalie, say something kind to him and I'll add or her, right? So, um, so, um, yeah, the, like at jam.strings and, um, Turlaxon, and I think Turlaxon probably might be the goalie that got hit here. Uh, the goalie was Ben Abel 14 on Instagram. So if you go at Ben Abel 14 on Instagram, you can see this. So, um, so listen, for young goalies learning how to play the position, you've got to get down on this ball, but you've also got, you can't do it naked. Okay. You can't, you just can't do it naked. All right. Um, uh, Jesus, where the shin guards? Yes. Uh, oh my God. Yes. Uh, uh, Dave Nord, Katie Nord. Um, uh, so yeah. So yeah. Jesus, where shin guards? Is, is this, who, who wrote that? That's really funny. Um, Mike Parash. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, yeah. Mom writes. Oh my God. Um, so this is dumb guys. Like this is dumb. You know, this, this, this doesn't make sense to me anymore. It hasn't for years. Okay. And when I see stuff like this, I'm like, okay, wait a second. We're watching like, okay, here's the best lacrosse goalies on the planet making saves. And I will tell you this, and I've said it before, the professional lacrosse goalies that I've spoken to in the past, right. Who, who are at this label level, they've absorbed, they're absorbing these balls, but they don't really like it. Like they don't. Right. Some have had surgeries to repair, you know, damaged, uh, damaged uh, arteries and things like that. But but this is the save you need to make. Like this is you can't get your stick down. Right. You, you can't get your stick down. Um, um, Turlaxon is a Dal- tournament in the Dallas area. OK, thank you. Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, 
I took a direct shot to the left shin a week ago. This is Mike Presh. Um, and it still left a broken blood vessel, red ring. That um, That's with shin guards, people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mike Tupin, that's just wrong. Um, uh, Dave Nord, high school boys played it last weekend and girls are playing it this weekend like Katie and her main club team. Cool. Awesome. So, all right. Rants a little... Now, the rants is never over. Who am I kidding? My rants are never over, right? So we're changing the game one goalie at a time, right? And so here's the deal. Jack and Cannon on this beautiful save, right? And, and this is a this this save is wicked. And let me let me just uh, fast forward this and let me just go in slow motion here. Look at the head of his stick. So this is an eclipse, which is a very floppy head. He just gets down there with the, the um this is why I don't teach soft toss drills or eye hand coordination this is there's nothing here about eye hand coordination this is just flooding the space right so he's gotten his stick down there thank god but if he didn't get his stick there um uh if he didn't get his stick there what would have made this save what's behind the ball right it's it's his shin boom boom right so he's about to have that same bruise as Ben Abel was Ben Abel 14 from at the Texas tournament did right. It's like, come on, right? Like, so let's be okay. We all agree. We got to get the, we, we got to flood the space. So what are we going to flood the space with my left hand to my right foot? No, I got to get my right foot there. My right shin. So for our goalies trying to get to five hole, if you're having trouble getting to five hole, right, then what tends to happen is that one, you're not ready to sacrifice your feet, your shins, your knees, your left testicle, your right ovary, whatever it needs to be, right? Or you're just relying on getting your stick there. And it takes two, it's just math, it's just geometry. It's like, I can't get my stick down there any faster. Well, how do you get it down there faster? One, you shorten the distance. So just like Ken Cannon did here in his base stance, in this stance, he's lowered himself. He understands that, okay, I can get up, right, to at a certain degree, and I can get down at a certain degree, right? So that's why telling a goalie to just always assume the same position is incorrect, okay? So, but, but we've got to start somewhere, right? So you're going to teach a young goalie how to... Um, how to stand, um, you know, uh, vertically, like with, you know, with a nice tidy position, um, you know, and then, but, but we're going to end up with this, right? Let me see if I can do, do is this my screen? This one, we're going to end up teaching our goalies how to do this, right? And so this is a signature lacrosse post. Um, um, I, I have no idea who this goalie is, but you know, Getting down in front of a bounce shot or a low shot, right? You know, I'll get to bounces in a whole other video, but the idea here is like, is like, you're gonna absorb this with something probably other than your stick, okay? Um, and that's really important to understand. Uh, so, so I mean, this goal is about to take this off the like, it looks like it's off his arm, right? Yeah, it's off his arm, dude. Um, let me, yeah, it's right there. Boom. No padding, no padding there. So this is why I can't stand goalie chest protectors either because we need shoulder caps and upper arm guards because I can't justifiably coach this kid for, and I don't coach this kid. I just pulled this off Instagram, but I can't justifiably and no goalie coach can justifiably ask this goalie to get in front of balls that are basically physically abusive, right? Like what kind of, like, let's say I'm not even coaching this kid in the net and I get him on the sideline and I just punch him in the arm, right? I would get arrested, but yet we put our kids in the cage and we say, Hey, good job, buddy. Go for it. Right now, listen, I'm not trying to make a bunch of like, you know, soft goalies here. You guys know that. But the idea is like, really? Like, what's the deal? So if I'm going to make saves down low, I need to flood that space with my body. And is my body ready to, to do it? What you'll notice here, um, again, this is just a snapshot, but uh, you'll notice that how his uh, shins go behind him and his feet are up. You've got to train for this, right? And for my lacrosse school university members, we're, we're, we're doing a, I'm, I'm working on a video series on how to train this uh, because it involves flexibility in the, in the, the feet, the, the ankle, the knees, the hips. It's not like you're just going to go out tomorrow and drop to your knees without like basically you might, you might hurt yourself, but um, we just got to keep that, in, keep that in mind. All right. So back to the, um, back to the video. All right. So playing again. Cannon drops, makes the save, gives up a rebound, gets back up. There's another angle of it here, right? Uh, so see how close the shot is. Boom. So it's just inside. Was that 12 yards, right? 
Um, so the ball side left. Oh, it's right, right behind my logo. Sorry, guys. Um, da -da 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 oh, no. Um, there it is. Nope, that's not it. Nope, sorry. Get that out of the way. There's the shot, right? Coming from top right. Right. Can cannon drops and then makes the save. Boom. Okay. Now, this is burn lore. Um, wait for a second here. Boom. Okay, this one's kind of harder to see because the defender walks right in front of him. But if you guys can see watching live, right, watch this. So what have I told you, right? What have I told you? So he comes across, ask comes across. And what's kind of cool here is you'll see the ball. He's already looking for the, the receiver of this pass. The ball is going to come out of the screen from the right. Let me just see if I can do, 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 boom, boom. See, look, he's already looking for who's getting the ball. He's not following the pass across. He's he's already looking for the, the the who's receiving this ball. And then so he he gets across lateral mobility, right? Oversteps the post, right? Oversteps the post. Why? Because he wants to be slightly further out at the shooter, right? He doesn't want to be so far back in the cage. He's a small dude. He wants to be a big presence. So he's not going to come super low to the like with a, some sort of flat arc that's crap he's gonna come a little bit further out so he oversteps it that's fine not by much but watch the save watch the save five hole shot five hole shot what's he do what's he do oh my god right knee look this is the not the nuts save okay this is the very like this is the often the, the very popular often not taught not the balls not the nuts save right but what's he doing there he's just flooding the space He's not even trying to get his stick there. Why? Geometry, right? The ball's coming too fast from too close, and he takes it right off his top of his right foot, right? Now, I guarantee you, for those of you that know, if you've ever gotten hit there in the top of your foot, right, there are all these nerves and, and uh, ve blood vessels, and you, and you can get what's called drop foot, where your foot goes dead, and I've had that happen. Your goalie's probably had it happen too. So this is where, I, you know, having like some sort of like a baseball shin guard on that has a, a protection for the top of the foot. This is no, not no problem to make this save. Other than that, like he, he makes this save and he sucks it up like a beast, right? But he's he's naked. And I'm, I just think that's the wrong example anymore because, you know, I don't need my professional lacrosse goalie limping around, right? Right? So there's the ball. He follows it. But right now he's going like, He's swearing a blue streak going like, you know, because to be honest, his foot was slightly outside the post anyway. Right. But he made the save, but that wasn't pleasant. That was not pleasant. Okay. So good on him for making it, but dang. Okay. So there's my second example for today. Right. All right. Now this is uh blaze Riordan dropping there, dropping there. Sorry. Is that too loud guys? I apologize. Oh, I just wanted to show you this, right? So, so watch the shots coming from uh, top right here, top center, right? There's the shot, right? Here it comes through. I got to figure this out a little quicker here, right? So, so what's kind of cool here is that as a goalie, you start to develop this understanding of, of when that ball is getting released. So right now, Riordan looks really casual, right? But now look, watch him, watch him. The ball is on, like he's, that ball is already being released, and he's not really in position, right? And then the ball gets released. You see the ball right there? Choo -choo -choo -choo. It's like a little Star Wars laser, right? All right, ball's right there. Gets released, but look at him drop, right? Look at him drop. That stick is where? It's like in the center of the cage, pretty much. And so he can go anywhere he wants to from there. This is kind of a bad shot anyway, because it kind of it, – you know, it, it, it basically hits him in the stick a little bit, right? Right. But he makes the save, right? Um, now playing through. Sorry for the volume, guys. This is a good one. All right. Coming up here. Low shot. Oh, this is the one I want to show you. Boom. Ah. Can I can I back this up? Sorry for the volume, guys. It was too loud. Hang tight. Is that volume too crazy? Just let me know. All right. Uh, this one all right so shot is coming from side right very close angle what is this like five six yards all right low stick 
typically means low release, not always, right? But um, uh, I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to cover that today, but we'll do our best. Um, here we go. So there's the low release. Watch Riordan. He's actually overstepped the post, right? Again, he's actually made a mistake. He's outside the post. Not good. That to me is not a very pro goalie move, right? If this was a high school goalie, I'd be like, dude, you're wasting your base save potential by putting your foot outside the post. That doesn't make any sense, right? So, um, but here we go. Now that ball gets released low. And what happens to Riordan? He just drops. Just dropping. Just dropping. Kind of looks like a hockey goalie. It kind of looks like a soccer goalie, right? One thing in lacrosse goal university, I have a, a, a series that I, I keep expanding on a little bit about like what we can learn from field hockey goalies, what we can learn from ice hockey goalies, what we can learn from soccer goalies. Um, and that's ever expanding. Um, and I'll do more. I'm going to do more and more of that. But the idea here, guys, is that we're, we're basically st we're, we're stopping being stupid. OK, the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to make saves like this. Right. I was taught. Hey, you shouldn't drop to your knees as a lacrosse goalie. That's stupid. Um, you know what? It's not. Now the question I get is um question I get is what about low to high shots? And um do I have that? This one. Let me just see if I can find this clip here, guys. Hang tight. Yeah, this is it. All right. Um, I'm not gonna be able to pause this. Yeah, I'll just play this one. This is from Loop Lee. Um, so I'm just going to let this loop through just so you can just kind of see it. So the question I get is like, well, if you drop to your knees, what about high shots? Well, it's true. Um, there is a learning curve here. And there's also a, a bit of, um, a bit of uh, experience that a goalie needs to learn. And in this particular clip, what's kind of interesting, the, um, the RMU goalie here, um, is that army? Who's that? Yeah. Falls for the, the, the head fake from the shooter, the head, the shooter drops his head and the goalie goes down and that's dumb. You don't watch the head of the shooter. You watch the stick and the hands and the, and basically up to like the elbow shoulders can give a fake away, but the hands can't really, um, the, the hands and the, and the, the angle of the stick, um, don't. So this goalie, this is a very close shot. Goalie comes out, which I think is a good move here in this case, because the shooter has very little angle. But what the mistake the goalie makes is he drops everything and the shooter just kind of holds onto it and shows, throws it over his shoulder. Okay. So what can a goalie do in this set, set um, this situation? It's what we saw the, the, those pro goalies doing, which is they're dropping to the knees, like on that save that Burnlore made, they're dropping to their knees but they're keeping their stick high out of respect for the shooter. So where is it here? This one. So, you know, Burnlor comes across, but his stick is ready to cover the top of the net, but his he's ready to take it with his foot, his shin, his knee, his left testicle, right? All that stuff down low. Okay. Um, um, oh, who knows the goalie that took it off there? So who is that? Let's give him credit, credit where credit's due. Who took that ball off the arm? Uh, Tyler, who is that, buddy? Um, Tyler works with some goalies, right? So, um, but listen, I, you know, I, one thing I'm a big, like, I think it's okay to call a kid a beast, but it's like, really, do we need them to have any more abuse than is necessary, right? Um, this is where, you know, for, you know, for um, um, the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to make more saves with their body. Now, one more question I had. Wade La Lemon? Lemon? Layman. Wade Layman. So any of you guys that know Wade Layman, let him know I talked about him this week. Um, and he because he's that's that's a sweet, that's a sweet save. That's the proper save, right? But the thing, the point is, is that we've got to basically help our goalies understand. All right, listen. Oh, uh, I just want to cover this point too. I had a comment on my Instagram account this week about um place for st thomas high school in florida cool um i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to find this on my this account um florida crabs um the comment was from a coach who had talked to a couple college coaches and this really got my back up the college coach and i've heard this too but this bothers me he said like, hey, I talked to two college coaches this summer and they said the best goalies are the ones that are ready to take to absorb more shots with their body. 
And I thought that's great if and only if those college coaches are also crying out for more protection for the goalies. Because I just think it's I think it's dumb to ask goalies to take abuse that is really unnecessary. I, I think we need some rule changes. I think we need some mandatory equipment, especially for the kids coming up. Because I know what's going to happen is if we make it mandatory coming up and we just make it we just make it a rule, they're going to make more saves. They're going to be better goalies, and they're going to they're going to be better, like healthier. They're not going to be injured, and they're going to be they're going to be making saves all over the place. So, so for the um, uh, for the um, goalies who, um, in terms of making, just to bring this back around, in terms of making saves down low you've got to understand this one you can't just adopt a stance for a stance's sake you have to start with an athletic base first okay then we put the stick in the hands right but that stick can't ruin a natural athletic base what you're basically seeing with Burn Lore and Kincannon and Riordan is if we took the stick out of their hands, that they would play in a, in a naturally athletic stance. And guess what that looks like, guys? It looks like an ice hockey goalie. It looks like a soccer goalie. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, I well, whatever, I won't get into it. But, but, but this is the way we need to go. So if you're working with your goalie, get him in the cage, get some tennis balls, take the stick away. And fire away and see what they do. I can probably guarantee, I can pretty much guarantee you that they will probably make more saves naturally without the stick than they will if you with the stick. Right. So, so it's really, you know, it's really kind of funny. So I hope these videos today showed you, like proved to you, we don't need to be this shin dude, right? We don't need to be this guy, right? That's stupid. But we need to ask our goalies to be making saves that require this, right? But I, I, I'm done with the conversation of like, oh, you know, the kid's a beast for beast's sake. Let's just like the kid's tough. Why does he have to be so tough? He doesn't have to be so tough, right? Because, um, you know, I, I think we need to just kind of remove that conversation. So, um your stance also has to be, has to modify based on the angle of the shot. Right. So if the, um, I hate, like, I hate seeing, like, if you're, if your kid has gone to a camp or clinic and a coach has allowed your goalie to stand with their stick hanging outside the post, or if they're tall, up, like covering above the, 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 the crossbar, you should fire that coach immediately. Right. That's just dumb. Like that is like, it's just dumb. It's, 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 I don't know how else to say it. Right. Um, so you've got to modify that stance. Um, and also I, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I believe the lacrosse goalie future is going to switch hands. So I encourage our goalies to start to do that as well. Right. Um, so if that helped you do me a favor, uh, leave me a, um, um, uh, you know, leave, leave me a, um, uh, a like a heart, a thumbs up, whatever, uh, Tyler's working with that goalie. So that's, um, uh, what's he say? I'm making a summer highlight tape right now and we'll be posting a short clip from it later uh, of him again, taking two in a row off the body. As long as they're good shots, right? Like to me, I, I don't think we're giving any credit to goalie taking it off the, sh- off the, um, 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 I, I like one of the, so one of the videos I'm doing for lacrosse goal university is, you know, this other coach talking about how great this college goalie was and pretty much every shot he was picking out of that goalie was they were shots like right into his stick or right into his chest. That to me isn't very great. It's not good. Like it's not like, I don't think we're so, so it's one thing to show a kid who's like moving to make that. It's another thing to just be in the right place at the right time and just getting absorbed. Uh, I'm a box goalie and in my old age prefer it. Why? Because I don't get abused by shots as much. The protection you're talking about. Um, and then, and then who's this, this is, um, (laughs) he'll have dents in his chin for the rest of his life. Yep. Yep. 
Oh, t- Tyler, right. Tyler, sorry, buddy. I can't see you in on this one de- uh, desktop that I have, uh, but I see you there. I'm a box goalie and in my old age prefer it. Why? Because I don't get abused by shots as much. Yeah, true. Um, let me just share. I'll leave you guys with one last story and then we'll wrap it up for today. I hope that if this was helpful, please like send me a note or whatever. And, um, 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 and then who's that? My daughter will, is that on YouTube? Who's telling me that my daughter will move into the shot if it's easier or faster than moving the stick? Who is that? Oops. Oh my goodness. I got a whole mess here. Uh, I can't tell who that is. Sorry. We'll go back to my main camera. All right. Um, it's not that Jonathan Cooper Redfern. It's not that hard to pad up. That's right. All right. So the last story. One of the things that that really affected me as a coach, um, and I'm sure Tyler, Greg, Barnhart, my daughter will. Yeah. Okay, cool. Barnhart, my daughter will move into the shot if it's easier or faster than moving the stick. Yes, it's true. Greg, sorry. Now I see it. Okay. Um, one of the things that really affected my, like impacted my coaching and my understanding of the game of lacrosse was I was also a, a soccer goalie. I was also an ice hockey goalie. I was a catcher in baseball ages ago. But when I moved to Canada in 2001, uh, and I started looking for field lacrosse, and I was playing with these box lacrosse players who were basically playing field with illegal sticks for field. So in box, you can have depth, um, and um, and uh, and so the, the 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 release of the ball was a little off, and so I was getting abused. I was getting more shots, like you know, off my thighs and, and things like that. And so I started. I, I went back to wearing football pants again, and um, and that was what I needed. I didn't necessarily. Um, uh, that's where I was getting a lot of balls. And, and I also went to this, this warrior chest protector that like I, we were going the right direction in the night in basically in the nineties with chest protectors and protection for lacrosse goalies. Um, and, um, and then we, um, we had issues with, um, just pro goalies, not wearing it, people not buying it, pennies and stuff, changing the game and how it looked and all that stuff. I talked about that last week, but, but it really impacted the way I thought about the lacrosse goalie position. So since about 2002 was when I really started kind of teaching goalies about like, all right, listen, we, you just got to be ready to like, it's no longer enough to make, try to make all your saves with your stick. Okay. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. So we've got to be in that. Um, we've got to be in that mindset that we're going to take, make more saves with our, our body. And lacrosse has only gotten feel lacrosse has only gotten more and more complicated with the athleticism of players, with the stick technology and all that stuff. And for new goalies that want to play at the high level and they, they, they want to play naked, it's you're seeing it at the pro level. It's not just about, you know, guys aren't thinking that, oh, well, the, the better shooters, they hit the corners more. They don't hit the goalie. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. Um, because like just in those couple clips that I showed you today, professional players miss targets too. They shoot the goalie in the stick or the head or the shoulder or the shin or the thigh or the knee or the nuts, like whatever. Right. So we've got to be there for that. And what's important is that when we make that save, right, when your goalie makes that save is that they make it and they're, and they're bulletproof. Like they're, 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 they're walking away from that going like they're ready for the next one. Not worried that, Oh, that last shot hit me in the top of my foot. That really hurts. I still feel it. Now that's in their mind going into the next shot. Cause that's what, that's what degrades a goalie's potential. Okay. And, and it happens to the best goalies, right? It degrades their potential for the next save. So, so in terms of getting shots to shots down low, you got to be ready to drop your knees, right? For our older guys watching, you got to, you're going to have to work on a little bit of flexibility, throw on the knee pads to do that. Um, because again, if you're asking your goalie to drop to their knees and they're in a crease, that's like dirt, there's no turf there. And they're falling on like rocks that are coming through that, that dirt, you know, you're going to have goalies that have like, you know, busted up knees and that's dumb too. Right. So if we're going to ask our goalies to make these types of saves, we have to equally as the adults in the room impose the rules and the protection in order for them to do it safely um, and also on a recurring basis. Right. Um, 
So that's that's really important. Last thing, Tyler writes, I tell my goalies we make saves with our footwork, not our sticks at the end of the day, and that girls who wear pads pick up getting front of the ball faster because they're more confident doing so. Yeah. One thing that drives me nuts about the girls out there, sorry, girls, if you're basically playing like booty shorts or like small soccer shorts, you're not maximizing what you can do as a goalie. All right. It makes no, it makes no sense. Like you look cute. You look great. But the bottom line is like, if you're not getting in front of the ball, if you're not dropping down like a baseball catcher to make some saves because you don't feel protected, you are out of your mind. You're not playing to be <laughs> Dave Nord. I struck a chord. All right. Um, um, right. It's not about looking cute. It's about wearing what you need to do the job and looking cute. I'll be honest, looking cute. will hold you back as a goalie. Right. So, I had this like one of our one of our lacrosse goal university members, a new uh, really top notch girl on the East Coast. I flat out said, "You don't want to be a Division One lacrosse goalie," and she goes, "No, no, but I do." I'm like, "You know what? Then get on some sweatpants, right?" Oh, but I don't like how they fit, and I think when they get wet in the fall, they get baggy, and my the, my butt's droopy. I'm like, I don't care. Do you want to be a Division One lacrosse goalie, or do you want your butt to look good? Come on, right? Like, let's be real about this, right? So, um, so listen, let's be smart, let's be, let's be, let's be real, um, and um, let's be honest with ourselves, right? So, parents out there, if your goalie tells you they want to play lacrosse in college and they're not doing these little things to be better, they're wasting your money. All right, all right, guys, listen, thanks for watching. To all my new lacrosse goal university members, thank you. If you're not a lacrosse goal university member, if not, why not? What's the deal? I want to coach your goalie, okay? And um, and uh, there's some good coaches out there who watch me on a daily basis. Tyler Story, you're one of them. Coach T. Um, and so I know he's doing good stuff. Uh, but there's a lot of goalie coaches out there that are just wasting your time and your energy and your money. And I don't want that for you anymore. So, um, so if... Uh, like, I'm running a little offer for October. Check your email if you're on my email list. Um, if you're not, why the hell not? All right. Um, um, da, 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 is that Mike Prash? Yep. He goes, I, Mike, why do you hate to say this? I hate to say it, but one of the things that crossing over as a box goalie and coach was how effective flooding the space is, especially when trying to stop shots through a screen and you can't track the shot. Um, yeah. Yeah. Flood the space. Save the space, not the ball. Been saying it for years. So, Mike, appreciate that. Um, that's really good stuff. Dave, Dave Nord, thanks again. Have a good one. Appreciate it. Good luck to Katie. Um, Dave, send me an email. Tell me how Katie's doing um, with that strength and conditioning coach. Um, that's really um, so good stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, last thing, head on over to athletespecific.com. And if you haven't done it already, get the automatic ne negative thought download for your goalies. Um and um, I know how you feel about being both box and field. Mike Prash, good stuff. All right, guys. Have a great week, everybody. See you next week when we're talking to Jim Beard more. And um, shoot me a message. And if you want to be part of my experiment, just send me an email. Hit exper put experiment in the subject line, and we'll get you going. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye now.